Senator Dianne Feinstein will retire from Congress when her term is up in 2024. After three decades, the California Democrat made the announcement yesterday. There appeared to be some confusion surrounding her retirement, however. Specifically, Feinstein herself seemed unaware that the statement announcing it, that she would not seek re-election, had already been released. Here's the audio, which is very confusing. Listen for yourself. Re-election. Well, I haven't made that decision. I haven't released anything. Okay, it will be my plan. You put out the statement? Yeah, put out statement. I didn't know they put it out. Okay. Um, so... It is what it is. I think the time has come. I have a whole other year. Uh, I have things that are underway. I expect to achieve them. I hope. Yeah. And so we'll see. Okay. Senator, Thank you. when did you make your decision? I know you said it was going to take you some time. Senator, we need to catch the train. Yeah. Well, my husband has died, and that affected the decision. Nope. But I think it's Can you make time. it this week? It's, a, it, it's not the end of next year. So I think she had some confusion, maybe, about whether she was being asked if she's running for re-election or if she's retiring, like, exiting the Senate today or something. That, mm. If I'm being charitable, that mm. was the confusion there. Obviously, her difficulty in communicating her thinking at her advanced age is something that has been pointed out and I think is perfectly fair to point out. Right. No disrespect to her. Right. But, look, we are governed by very elderly people, and this is be there's been yeah. good reporting on whether she is, again, at her advanced age, clued in enough yeah. to the and goings on. And, like, you're not, you know, I'm sorry, you're not like some anti elderly person. Yeah, because it's not all elderly people. Yeah. It's not every person who's 70 or 80 in Congress who's behaving this way. The San Francisco Chronicle, to your point, reported, I think, in the first part of last year, uh, quote, the lawmaker said they had to reintroduce, reintroduce themselves to Feinstein multiple times during an interaction that lasted several hours. Um, rather than delve into policy, Feinstein, then 88, repeated the same small talk questions, like asking the lawmaker what mattered to voters in their district. The member of Congress said, it's the anonymous report, with no apparent recognition that the two had already had a similar conversation. So these are her colleagues that, off the record, are, are, are anonymously reporting that there have, these issues have been ongoing for a long time. At one point, there was a doctor who was reported to have had some concerns about some of the medication she was taking that was prescribed for things that have to do with your kind of mental acuity, and on and on and on. Yeah. Well, her retirement will open up a fierce uh, fight for the California Open Senate seat. Representative Rokana is uh, potentially in the mix. Um, I know some other people are weighing that as well. I think they talked about Barbara Lee. Yeah. They've talked about um, Katie, Katie Porter, Porter is, she has got, said she's going to right. be running. And gotten a lot of trouble from Democrats who said it was premature for her to announce her intention to run before Dianne Feinstein had affirmed Adam Schiff, yeah. her intention not to run. I, that all seems like an effort to clear the field for someone other than Katie Porter, since it, it seems obvious that Katie Porter had some insight into the fact that Dianne Feinstein wasn't going to be running again. Mm -hmm. But it, it's shaping up to be a very interesting race, because again, this is one of those solidly blue districts where ostensibly you would expect there to be more tolerance for a more left version of politics. The state, the, the district being the whole state. Yeah, sorry, yeah. The, sorry the state that... It, biggest district there is, the district there is. <laughs> California. This is a this is a more an area where you would expect there to be more tolerance mm -hmm. for lefty politics. However, what we've seen in California repeatedly, especially with a statewide Medicare for All proposal that was tanked by a Democratic legislature, that oftentimes are in the situation where Democrats like to say they're for X, Y, and Z when there's no chance of it passing. When they do have majorities, they suddenly come with all these excuses mm -hmm. for why things can't happen. And I wonder how that's going to bear out in this race. Are people going to try to run to each other's left? And if they do, what's going to happen when the winner is actually faced with the proposition of enacting some of the policies that they've run on? You had a favorite clip of the senator that you wanted to play. Yeah. I so believe. as we <laughs> as we kind of sunset the the age of Diane Feinstein, I think it's worth noting that. The, the, the liberal media has been defending her despite this obvious evidence of her both taking political positions that aren't great and seeming to be in some kind of a cognitive decline. She was addressed by climate activist children, mm -hmm. like 12-year-olds in her office, who very politely and sweetly asked her what she was going to do about climate uh, legislation. This was her uh, response. We are trying to ask you to vote yes on the Green New Deal. Okay, I'll tell you what. 
We have our own Green New Deal. Some scientists have said that we have 12 years to turn this around. Well, it's not going to get turned around in 10 years. What we can do Senator, if this doesn't get turned around in 10 years, you're looking at the faces of the people who are going to be living with these consequences. The government is supposed to be for the people and by the people and all You know what's interesting about this group? Is I've been doing this for 30 years. I know what I'm doing. There's a new Iron Lady in town, folks. <laughs> Honestly, my, my sympathies are pulled in multiple directions watching this because I, I do hate the tactic of using kids for emotional blackmail. Like, they don't know anything about anything, so I her telling them to go F themselves is actually kind of admiral to me. But I don't, in general, like political figures, period, especially ones being... You know, saying no, I know better than you, my constituents. So, uh, so truly, I am, I well, am, look, I am on the fence you're, on this you're, one. Caitlin can, Flanagan. can the kids and Ty and Feinstein both lose? <laughs> Caitlin Flanagan kind of agrees with you here because she in the Atlantic. So this is what I mean about the liberal institutions yeah. backing up. Feinstein. I love Caitlin Flanagan. Caitlin Flanagan wrote in the Atlantic. This is how she described that exchange. A group of jackbooted tots yes. and aggrieved yes. teenagers showed up at the local office of Diane Feinstein, 85 years old, holding with the intention of teaching her about climate change and demanding that she vote for the Green New Deal. So the take here was like, how dare these children, same as Diane Feinstein's, how dare these children presume to know more than this great lady who's been doing this for so long? That was Diane Feinstein at her most based. <laughs> <laughs> I will say that. Not something you'd say about her uh, very often. Jackbooted tots. 12 year olds are now. Fatigue wearing army army kids. Oh uh, man, well her her retirement will bring down the uh, the we talk, the the median age of our senators. I mean, we talk this look this is an issue how how over the average age of the member of a member of Congress has gone so far up since yeah. the founding since the last over the last 50 years and um, it is a real look it's it's an issue when the people in government don't have the wherewithal to address, you know, we're, we're talking about these very important tech issues a lot, social media issues uh, of, of great concern, yeah. and, they just, and they do not have a grasp whatsoever. It comes out so clearly in mm. these hearings. It's embarrassing mm -hmm. listening to them ask questions about it. Um, do, I, I saw a, did you see the New York Times op-ed about, maybe we can put that on screen if, if, if you guys are listening and can find it, the, the Japanese economist who was saying, it, it was, a, did you see this? It was a crazy, right, like, f kind of, Profile of this Japanese economist who has provocatively asked, "Should all the old people in Japan commit seppuku oh, because they're?" I, think I, saw, I heard about this a little bit. Yeah, and it, I mean, it was crazy, but it was just like it, it got like a polite reception in the New York, New York Times. It's like just asking questions. Um, I, I think, call me a, a moderate squish, if you will. <laughs> I think there is a middle ground, perhaps, that we, between that we... giving old people total control of our government. <laughs> And systematically, ritualistically forcing doing, them to doing the to, giver, to, realizing to that the, 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 the novel The Giver is actually a dystopian tale yeah. and not something that we should model our society yeah. after. So, again, I, I know I'm just a squishy centrist, but maybe a middle ground between total government yeah. by gerontocracy and uh, and the sword in the gut thing. I, but, I think we can agree on that one, Robbie. All right, all right. some hot takes for you today. More rising right after this.